Do you have any advice for young cardio physicians um, and those interested in pursuing medical innovation? Honestly, if, like I said, I, I fell into it and I love it, but that's because I like to have a balanced life where it's not just surgery or it's not just, you know, being in the clinic with the patients. And so having this, these experiences with engineers, business people, and being outside in the industry, I, I think is, is super exciting. I think that surgeons that want to get into it, a lot of times they think, oh, I have to be at the big academic university. If I'm not at Stanford or UCSF, or, or you know, there, there's no way that I can contribute in some sort of meaningful way to like this larger development of technology. It's quite the opposite. Right. In fact, usually it's uh, community practice or private practice physicians that are kind of almost doing a second job to uh, contribute to these devices uh, and and technology, uh, you know, improvements. Uh, that you know, if if you're intrigued by it at all, usually there's opportunity. But what you have to do is you have to be open to talking to industry people, talking to reps at different companies. Right. Kind of let it be known that you're willing to offer your expertise because a lot of times they're just looking for somebody an engineer doesn't think like a doctor right and often although some doctors are engineers most of us don't think like engineers they're just looking for like they'll have a great idea for a device and they'll tell you and you're like that doesn't make any sense clinically and they have to go back to the drawing board so it's trying to bring the two you know ways of thinking together which is you know i i think really really fun fun part of the job have you been involved with the FDA process for this technology? Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, I you know we have we have various meetings here and there, and you know I think the FDA people that work in the FDA are you know largely saints. I mean, they 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 they, they can be challenging because they are designed. They, their job is designed to be a no job. Their <laughs> their job is like they are the people that are putting the brakes on because they're trying to keep the population safe. Right. At the same time, uh, they are also often working with so many different companies that are proposing so many different types of devices. And most of these devices are designed as a business model to help a company make money. I mean, yes, certainly the, the goal is always to help patient care and pr promote you know, uh, advancement in the field, but there's a financial aspect to it that, that that's there also. So, so the, the meetings, um, you know, with, with FDA, it's a very, it's a very kind of strict, uh, there are very strict guidelines and policies and it's, it's, there's a lot of bureaucracy involved. Yeah. And so sometimes you think, can we just have a phone call about something? Yeah. We can just kind of answer this question real quickly. No, it's not going to happen. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have to kind of wait your turn until you can get it back on the docket and go through it. So I, I, I think that the, the people that we deal with are amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the process is a challenge. Yeah. Yeah. A lot yeah. of brain damage. 